Well, that is one way I did not anticipate this NFL draft panning out for the Eagles. The board fell a very bizarre type of way and it left Howie backed into a corner. Both cornerbacks were off the board. Jalen Waddle had already gone to the Miami Dolphins. Penne had already dropped past the Bengals and all of a sudden, all you're left with are players like Quitty Pay, like the offensive lineman, and there was one wide receiver left. How he had to make a snap judgment. Does he trade up or does he let him slip by? He went up and got his man, and for that we can't fault him. But will it be the right call? Welcome to our first of our NFL Draft Rewind videos where we're going to recap the best and probable worst of what's going to follow over the course of the weekend. Let me know what you think about this pick down in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Film breakdowns on Devonta Smith and every Eagles draft pick will be following suit. But for now, we're talking about Devonta Smith. How he traded up with the Cowboys of all teams, the arch nemesis, a divisional rival, to get Devonta Smith to jump the New York Giants. He probably assumed the Giants were going to make that move. And being sat at 12, I kind of get it. Probably thinks he would have gone down a lot further than 12 if the Giants didn't take him, but it's a risk that Roseman really didn't want to take. And in return, he does three things very well. One of them a little bit shakily, but we'll get to that later. The first thing he does well is he doesn't be a dumbass. It sounds simple, but Roseman could have very easily over leveraged himself, been over aggressive. And there was always that law of Justin Fields, wasn't there? The Ohio State quarterback who slipped through the cracks. And if Howie were Man, any ounce of doubt about Jalen Hurts could have very easily hit that self-destruct button and draft the quarterback for the second year in a row. He didn't do that and instead decided to bring in one of Jalen Hurts' favorite targets. Someone who he linked up with at Alabama who he will now do the same with in Philadelphia. Now not only that but Smith is a Heisman winner. He went out of his way to say he wants to play with Jalen Hurts. Hurts said on Adam Schefter's podcast not too long ago that he would love to play with Smith. There's clearly a chemistry there. It's the best thing really Really, the Eagles could have done. But Waddle was, in fairness, my second graded receiver in this class behind Jamar Chase. I get why he went to the Dolphins. But it, it's a bit annoying. In the trade up, the Eagles gave away pick 84. So that was a third round pick. So nothing really too substantial to go up and secure their guy. Now, what are they getting in Devonta Smith that was worth trading up for? That's going to be the next thing. More than anything, they're going to get a very crisp route runner. Devonta Smith may be small. We've all heard the comments about his weight being only 166 pounds and that he may not translate to the NFL level because he's not a burner like Deshaun Jackson. And no one of that stature has ever succeeded at the NFL. And that may be the case, but ultimately, Devonta Smith doesn't win through sheer speed. He wins through leverage and understanding how he can best use his skill set to get past defensive backs. He may be the crispest route runner in this class. So good at getting low into his cuts and bursting out. Being able to use head fakes, a lot of aggressive hand movement and carry speed through the route. He does have that second gear, which enables plenty of deep targets. He's not a burner, so to speak, but he's someone that will open a defense up because one false move and he will be gone. He's got that about him. He's also got the production to back it up. The man had back-to-back -back seasons with a 1,000 receiving yards and double-digit touchdowns and exploded onto draft boards after winning the Heisman Trophy back in 2020. Now, would he have won that if Jalen Waddle had stayed healthy? Ifs, buts, and maybes, we're here to talk absolute. Devonta Smith was absolutely the Heisman winner. Now, he actually broke the season record set by Jamar Chase in 2019 to win that award, backing up an astonishing 1,856 yards and averaging 18.5 yards per catch. So he may have a slim frame. He may be pretty light, but he's proven himself at the SEC level. He now has to do so at the NFL level. That's going to be the next big challenge where the hits come a lot harder, the DBs are a lot tougher, a lot older, and a lot wiser. They may not fall for his shenanigans as quickly. The other thing I like here outside of Roseman's intuition and the fact that it obviously adds some comfort to Jalen Hurts as opposed to ruining his life is that it puts some trust in Nick Sirianni. Now, if you're a reader of phillysportsnetwork.com, you'll know I put an article up not too long ago. It was meant to be a video as well, guys. I've been so busy. I'm sorry. That broke down every single wide receiver Nick Sirianni has ever coached and worked with. And you notice the trend. There are at least six foot one, most of them that succeeded, and they all have different abilities. And he 
he still was able to get the most out of them. This goes back to Dwayne Bowe with the Chiefs in 2012. You've got Keenan Allen with the Chargers, Michael Pittman, Zach Pascal. All of these guys were maybe mid to low round draft picks. All of them had significant production. Briani preached that wide receivers come in all shapes and sizes at the X spot. I presume there was a little hint there over to Devonta Smith. I assume he's going to be the X guy. Not a problem. I don't think. I think that's absolutely fine. He should be able to survive there. But this does put a lot of trust in Sirianni and his ability to maximize the skill set of Devonta Smith and get the most out of him. This is someone that does have that big play speed. Someone that can break away in a hurry. While he has a lean frame, has a lot of explosiveness to his game. Has a lot of deception to his route running. And Sirianni loves that. We know he's big on route running already. This could be an absolute dream for Sirianni to implement in his offense and we've learned essentially that instead of getting a circle into a square hole and going do you know what it's not going to work like Doug Peterson seemed to do we know from that presser that Sirianni wants to mold that hole around the player mold his offense around the skill set of Devonta Smith and if he can do that if he can get Smith into open space if you can keep him away from press coverage from linebackers from safeties you may end up with an absolute steal here at the end of the day the Eagles come away with the most prolific receiver of the NFL draft and not someone that may be the most polished, someone with the highest upside like a Jamal Chase, but the most statistically prolific. And that has to count for a lot to say, do you know what? We're building around Jalen Hurts. Let's get him his favorite target from Alabama. Let's get him the Heisman winning wide receiver. Well, we've missed on JJ. We know Rager struggled as a rookie. Let's get him some help, shore up the receiving position and potentially have a tandem for years to come. Not too much to dislike. Are there concerns? Absolutely. But for now, they are all ifs, buts and maybes. Let me know what you think, guys, down in the comment section below. My name is Liam Jenkins. We will see you tomorrow for our live stream starting off at 6.30pm. And, of course, plenty of coverage over on phillysportsnetwork.com. So make sure you're checking us out over there as well for all of the latest analysis on Devonta Smith and every pick that follows from me and the team. I'll see you next time.